Tom Tom invited us to Amsterdam to see how their maps are made. This video is the fourth in the series accompanying an article describing Tom Tom's HD traffic service. Now, gathering all this data when you when you look at accurate real time traffic, uh, we have multiple community input probes. Uh, it's not only that we uh, gather data from our own systems; we have more and more built-in systems also from uh, from our contribution, our, our cooperation with Renault and Fiat. There are more and more mobile systems using our technology. Uh, we have fleet management systems, and we can also have third-party systems, or from the government, that, that still measures a lot, but that will be less in the future. Um, now, this is the nice traffic center that we built here, in order where we get all this data in from different sources. There's a lot of science in this one that trying to puzzle it together to, to establish from where, what's happening there exactly. Um, one signal is a little bit more important than the other signal uh, from mobile phones is a little bit less accurate than from our own systems etc so there's, there's a lot of uh, wisdom behind here and we make traffic information out of it and send that out to our customers as i said this is just to indicate how it happens because this is a fully 100 percent automized system which is a very big distinguishing but with, with what the government does they just look at screens and say oh that's a traffic jam and then send it out there's, there's, but there's no human interaction in our system now, uh, I just have an example of uh, the February the 3rd, uh, 2012, there was snow in the Netherlands, and as you can see, somehow the gods only chose our country to, uh, <laughs> to put the snow on here. This is just the, ra the radar. And you also saw this very nicely on our, as we, um, on our screen, tomtom.com slash live traffic is, is just a public uh, web page where you can always uh, trace that. We know this this tomtom.com live traffic is always on the screens at the traffic centers in the Netherlands and all around the world, by the way. They're, they're also using that more or less, but we have to talk to them about that. But this is what we saw in the Netherlands. Exactly where the snow was, there were traffic jams. And if you zoom in a little bit, and there's a very interesting thing that you can distinguish here. It's also, there are actually every and every street where there was some delay, we could measure it. Because all, everywhere where there are cars, <coughs> we can measure it. And there are for sure no inductive loops or cameras or whatsoever on these kind of streets. But we see the traffic over there. And this is very important to give people the right advice. Um, we have now an open LR, if you call it, a new lo location referencing system that works even on a very detailed level. We can put a traffic jam on any road on the world where where we measure a traffic jam. And that's, that's something that we encountered because we had so much information that the bottleneck was not anymore in the information, but in the way how to communicate with it. But this is the same information as all our customers receive on their device right now. So this is what people use to navigate from A to B. And what you can clearly see, Amsterdam is really quiet right now. <laughs> <coughs> um, that has a reason. So what you see here, this is the peripheric. It's uh, completely congested right now. Only this part you can uh, kind of flow. And I see here a dark red traffic jam. I don't know if this is explained before, but we identified three different colors for traffic. Yellow means minor delay, so only a couple of minutes extra delay. Competitors will probably not even mention this as a traffic jam. Uh, red is a heavy delay, and dark red, that's the worst, because that's a standstill traffic jam. If I zoom in here on this traffic jam east of the city center of Paris, then I think no. <coughs> this is it. 22 minutes. 22 minutes over 5 to 3 kilometers. Before I use this as a traffic jam, as an example, I want to zoom in here a bit to show you the big difference between uh, using TomTom -tom devices to measure traffic jams and using loop data. Because I think this delay on this highway, the government probably covers as well. I cannot imagine that a major road near Paris doesn't have loops. But we not only measure that traffic jam on the, on the highway, we also see the congestion on all the entrance roads going onto the highway. <coughs> so you can see it's like spaghetti all going there. Um, it's important to measure this because even if it's 200 meters, there's four and a half minutes delay. Mm -hmm plus the 22 minutes of delay on the highway, of course, makes quite a big of uh, delay time in your route. Well, using this as an example, so what if I'm a customer who's here right now, so I depart here, and my destination is somewhere here. 
in here. <coughs> I'm a user of HD traffic, and this is my route. Um, so in this case, it's a 9.6 kilometer trip with 25 minutes travel time. This is when I'm an HD traffic customer. When I'm not an HD traffic customer, so I have no real-time traffic, <coughs> then this is my route. It sends me right through the traffic jam. Now it's a trip of 44 minutes. So you can see that, uh, oh, including almost half an hour of delay. So this is an example where when you use HD traffic, it will find out what is the quickest route from A to B. And in this case, you save 300 meters of uh, distance and you save a lot of travel time. But it depends on the location and on, on the time. Um, it can also be that standing still in traffic is still the quickest solution. In an urban area, you have many alternatives. So that's where AC traffic works really well. You have a lot of alternatives. 